Splish Splash! I'm taking a bath. Water type Pokemon moves. Like, how does being wet hurt? Like, what? Just close your eyes, walk away, grab a towel. It's not like you're drowning. <laughs> All right, well, if you're a being of fire, then I guess being moist can hurt, or at least be a hindrance. And water does just sort of completely wreck the ground and rocks and stuff. I mean, look at what rivers can do. That's nuts. But just like everything, if you throw it hard enough, it'll hurt someone, even words. Oh. But I mean, we can use water jets to cut steel and things. Water can be pretty deadly, but for the most part, like, oh no, it's a wave. Ah, the pain. The water used in Pokemon attacks for sure has some level of elemental magic in it. I mean, how else would you explain the move bubble? Well, like this, because in this video, we're going to cover every single water type Pokemon move, explaining what it does and how it does, and maybe even why it does. So let's dive right in. Frig, I used the dive pun again. Hi, Loxton. Hi, similar disconnected voice. Could you use some extra cash? Well, you know, who couldn't? Sounds like you need to gain honey. Wait, no, I said that wrong. This video is sponsored by Honey Gain, an effortless way to gain a little bit of extra dollarinos. I could buy a pizza with this. So what is it? It is a computer and mobile device service where you share your internet connection. That's it. That's it? Yep. You employ your internet connection to help data scientists, advertising, and e-commerce researchers, and web intelligence agencies. It helps everyone with ad fraud prevention, brand protection, pricing intelligence, travel fair aggregation, and SEO monitoring services, making the internet an overall better and safer place for you and everyone. And in exchange, we pay out a dime a gig. But is it safe? Of course. Our network is inaccessible by outsiders and is fully encrypted. And we don't collect any personal data. Heck, if you've ever booked a flight or hotel room from a best deal site, then you've already indirectly benefited from Honey Gain. So yes, you could have been earning extra cash this whole time. Well, now I feel dumb. You should. Honey Gain. Quick, easy, simple, passive bonus dollars in exchange for your help in making the internet a better place. Well, I don't know if you couldn't tell, but I'm quite a fan of Honey Gain now. They're sticking with me. Bubble! A spray of countless bubbles is jetted at the opposing Pokémon. This may lower their speed stat. How bubbles cause physical pain, I'm not sure. But if you think about it, bubbles popping are... they're... they're... they're explosions! Just really small, and so preciously delicate. A bubble is a tiny amount of gas entrapped in a spherical volume, usually made of liquidish stuff. It just so happens that the most generic bubble we think of when we say the word bubble is a soapy water bubble. Though water doesn't need soap to bubble, pour yourself some pressurized tap water and you'll likely get a few bubbles for a couple microseconds. But the bubbles in this attack are coming from a creature, and saliva is much easier to make bubbles out of, especially the thicker stuff. All those enzymes allow the liquid to have a higher surface tension more strength to stay a bubble before popping. So the bubbles that Pokemon blow could very well be spit-faced. But if the original Squirtle Pokemon card shows us anything, it's that soap has very likely been used to punish this Squirtle. This Squirtle has a potty mouth. Fun fact! Soapy water is actually really good as an insecticide, so bubble should honestly destroy bug-type Mon. But I get that that would be hard to program. Uh, but anyway, if you listen to the sound the bubbles make in the anime, they do in fact sound like they are popping with force! They hurt! So maybe they are extremely pressurized and the popping causes the water to fly out like moist miniature fragmentation grenades. Yeah, that's cool. Bubble Beam is a spray of bubbles that is forcefully ejected at the target and it too may lower the speed stat. It's just bubble again, but a lot. Now it's a concentrated stream of them. I guess this one makes more sense hurting because it's actually a jet stream of bubbles. Each one of those could have a serious punch to it. But why do these moves reduce speed? Well, have you ever been drenched in a load of magic? bubbles? Well then how would you know that they wouldn't? But also, it may leave a slick residue, as soapy and saliva-y bubbles tend to do, which makes it harder to get traction, which makes it harder for you to start running or start attacking, thus reduced speed. Withdraw has the user withdraw its body into its hard shell, raising its defense stat. Uh, there is no reason for this move to be water type, so I guess, hey, move number three, and we have our first
first not water type move. I could put that in the thumbnail now, thanks. But it's not that terrible, I suppose. I do get what Game Freak was thinking. Uh, back in Gen 1, which Pokemon had shells? Oh yeah, they're all water type. Okay, sure. But looking ahead, more and more non-water types learn this move now than water types. What is inherently watery about going inside of your own shell? Sure, turtles and clams and such live in the water and have shells, but so many other creatures and things have shells too, and they can all learn withdraw. I guess they just didn't think ahead. It only took the very next gen for them to not be a water it's shuckle. It's forgivable. And like withdraw, you might think clamp is sort of the same way, but no, hear me out. Clamp has the target clamped and squeezed by the user's very thick and sturdy shell for four to five turns. So I guess it turns out the only thing in the animal kingdom that can clamp is clams and maybe barnacles, but they have to ask nicely. But crabs are completely unable to clamp things with their vice-like claws. Hmm. Uh, but actually, the move's original Japanese name clears things up. It's quite literally clamp with shell, which is also why the move's animation shows a big shell. So yeah, it is for sure a clam move, and clams live in the water, and they're all wet and stuff, so it's water type. Yeah. And besides, crabs get the next one. Crab hammer hammers the target with a large pincer. Critical hits land more easily. And they should, as you're crushing them with a 10,000 horsepower claw. It's just a big ol' smash. It's ridiculous. We did a whole video about this and Kingler and Shelder and stuff. Check it out here. But as for why it's water type specifically, well, duh. It's for crabs, the purely aquatic animal. Jeez, land crabs do not exist. There are no Pokemon based on land crabs. Mm -mm. No siree. Don't remind me what they turn into. Hydro Pump. The first real move in this list that's water, like straight up water. The target is black blasted by a huge volume of water launched under great pressure. If you've ever been a child like I have once, then you would know that water is great at pushing things, even just your hose out front. But if you take that hose and put it under just a little more pressure by like putting your thumb over the end of it or something, ah! wow, you did so little, but it made such a big change. So now imagine a fire hose doing it. Look at those fire hoses. And now imagine a tank. And if you pressurize water enough and make the water almost pinpoint you can cut through just about anything, ranging from wood to thick steel. Water is crazy. Another iconic move, Surf, is where the user attacks everything around it by swamping its surroundings with a giant wave. This move is cool, and makes for some amazing anime shenanigans. But they never really show it being used outside of the water in the anime. I mean, where would they get enough water to swamp an entirely indoor battlefield, let alone in the wild, say, a desert? Do droughts not happen in the Pokemon world because a single wandering ice cube floats and waddles across the globe, meandering into deserts and using surf. Could you imagine a Pokemon just straight up flooding an entire forest? The damages could be extreme, and that's why it's a damaging move in the first place. Floods are super dangerous. Heck, this move is basically a mini tsunami. And the cherry on top of it all is that it features a Pokemon surfing the wave of the flood. That's mega rad! In the 90s, at least. Now, I'm not sure if I can say this next Pokemon move because of YouTube's rules. If it gets demonetized, you'll know why. Water gun. Like Apple's gun emoji, the foe is blasted with a forceful shot of water. See, it's like a water pistol. It shoots water, and that water is pressurized just like Hydro Pump, but a lot less powerful. It's the crappy five pack at the dollar store powerful. Ugh. With Waterfall, the user charges at the target and may make it flinch. And this move is used for a little more than just shooting some water. This one is used to climb up waterfalls. The Pokemon is so good at swimming that they can just ignore the huge amount of water falling and they're just able to straight up ascend. That's some speed. And if that speed is used to ram straight into you, I'm sure you're going to flinch. But the question remains, why is it water type? Based on its description, it's just ramming an opponent. It's just a really hard tackle. And the modern games sort of just explain it away, like, uh, you teleport the enemy to a waterfall scene, and then they get hit in the middle of it as the user swims up it and rams them. Uh, this is dumb. But I like how Gen 6 and before sort of show it, or at least how my imagination imagined it with the really old games. The user almost summons an upside down waterfall under the target and then they ram them. So at least then there's actually water there explaining the water type. But my favorite depiction has to be Squirtle's up special in Smash Bros. He summons water underneath himself and swims up it while also hitting the enemy. It, it, it's real good. Sakurai should make the next Pokemon spin-off. 
Octazooka. The user attacks by spraying ink in the target's face. This may also lower the target's accuracy because you've got ink in your eyes. Your life is quite sucky and dark now because of the ink in your eyes. This move was purposely made for Octopus Pokemon, and sure enough, it was the signature move of Octillery until Grappaloct came around, though there was also a single event Sableye that knew it. I... I don't want to know. Squid and octopus live in the water, hence water type. And I mean, the ink that they make is just water with a whole bunch of stuff in it that makes it black. So it's just like a water gun, except it's super sticky and icky and dark pain in the eyes. Mm. Hopefully it rains soon to help wash that out. The move Rain Dance has the user summon a heavy rain that falls for five turns, powering up water type moves and lowering the power of fire type moves. This is a big TM move, meaning that it can be taught to so many Pokemon. And whoa! Most of the water types do have the ability to control water. Who would have guessed that they could summon it too? Though realistically they have always sort of been able to summon it. Do you really think you can fit over a thousand gallons of water in a Totodile? Insert magical creature hand waving. Fun Pokemon that can learn it are Zapdos, who I assume just shoots the thunderclouds that it's flying through, which makes them rain. Because Rain Dance isn't specifically a dance that makes it rain. You feel me? It's more or less a phrase that means to bring rain, as rain brings good crops. Cultures from all around the globe have their own type of rain dance, normally called a rain-making ritual, but in America, the most well-known are those of various Native American peoples. They have all kinds of rain dances where they, well, dance. To ask for rain. Whereas, in Japan and all over East Asia, it was more common to have shrines that you would pray to for rain. And this would explain the name of the move in Japanese. Rain prayer. It's the thing that they do over there. And if you don't know why rain is water, maybe you should get some sleep. Come on. You should have gone to bed an hour ago. I'll still be here tomorrow. It's the internet. Whirlpool. Yeah, like the washing machine brand. The user traps the target in a violent, swirling whirlpool for four to five turns. Yeah, just like the washing machine. It's a vortex of water that washes away the bed. Now, there are only two things you can dive into, liquids and gases, because diving into solids typically makes you die. True story. But the move dive is specifically the water sort of dive. They dive on the first turn, and on the next turn they float up and attack. How they dive when not near any body of water is a question for another day. But come to think of it, the underwater battles in Ruby and Sapphire also make no sense for this place to be using the dive move. Because, like, you're already under the water. And, like, how are you breathing? How are you commanding your Pokemon? Blurps and boobles? <laughs> Gotta be careful when doing that, the bubbles you make explode, you might kill someone. Hydro Cannon hits the target with a watery blast. The user can't move on the next turn. Okay, so it's Hydro Pump, but different, and only the water starters can use it. The user needing a break afterwards makes sense. It takes so much energy to compress water, to the point where the gains are usually not worth the costs. Liquidation has the user slam into the target using a full force blast of water. This may also lower the target's defense stat. So, uh... I'm not so sure about that name. Like, it's a pun, I get it. Water is liquid, haha, -ha, liquidation. But like, when a business liquidates, it turns all of its physical stock into cash. And usually they do this when they are closing, like for good. And in terms of living things, when you liquidate someone, it means to kill them, usually violently. Wow, great. Freaking Golisopod in the anime uses this move by making a katana out of water. Like, what even is Pokemon? The Japanese name of the move translates to Aqua Break, which I think works a bit better. You're using water to break the defense of the opponent down. Like how you can use pressurized water to chip away dirty sidewalks and rust. Which, uh, add to the defense? Firehose protests, there you go, try defending against that. Muddy water! It's surf, but there's dirt in it. Water pulse! Uh, no, okay, alright. Muddy water has the user attack by shooting muddy water at the opposing Pokemon. This may lower their accuracy. And it's basically always just been the same exact surf animation, like in almost every single gen. It's just brown instead of blue, like almost every game. It's like that original Mario thing where the bush is also the cloud, except it's water and water with dirt in it. So it's not as bad, I guess. If you get water in your eyes, it already sucks because you have water in your eyes. Your life is just a tad more miserable because you have water in your eyes. But oh boy, does it suck more if you get mud in that water in your eye because then you have mud in your eyes. It's terrible and harder to see and thick because you have mud in your eyes. 
Muddy water, to be exact. Not watery mud, because that's redundant. Ah, the eyes! You know, it'd be cool if Surf just sort of became muddy water based on where the battle is taking place. I want more stuff like that. That'd be neat. With Water Pulse, the user attacks the target with a pulsing blast of water. This may also confuse the target. It's just like a pulse of water. Oh, so what? You say, wrong. Concussive waves in water are extremely deadly. No joke. Unlike air, water isn't compressed as much during disruptive forces like explosions or even just waving your hands in the water. Thus, water is a wonderful way of transmitting force. I mean, that's why waves exist after all. And if you're underwater while there's a water pulse going on, man, your poor ears, they feel that hard. Definitely confusing you. Water sport is not to be confused with water spout. Water sport is where the user pees on you. I mean, the user soaks the battlefield with water. This weakens fire type moves for five turns. Why a likely water type Pokemon would need this is unbeknownst to me, but okay, it's competitive. The move is called water game in Japanese, and I'm not entirely sure why it's called that. It could be a reference to children playing in sprinklers, I guess, like a sort of sport or game. And for sure, if you're spraying water around, it's going to make fire harder to happen. And then we have water spout, which sounds like it should be a little sprinkler or small faucet-like thing, but alas, no. It's where the user spouts water to damage opposing Pokémon. The lower the user's HP, the lower the move's power. It may be based on the effect that spouts have. A spout is basically a hole where liquid goes through from a container or storage. It's like the top of a water bottle or milk jug. The first time you open the spout, the water inside is somewhat pressurized by all the water inside, i.e. it's going to come out faster than when the containers are half empty. It's simple hydraulics. It's why you can spill something full and it comes out so fast and you waste so much of it. It's as if it wants to ruin your carpet. But then you get to the end, there's only a few little bits of water left in that bottle, and it's so hard to get those last few drops. Aqua Jet, because in Gen 4 they realized aqua means water, so almost all of the new water moves start with aqua, it seems. And Aqua Jet is just a jet of water. It's the same principle as the rest of the water streams. So instead of repeating myself, here's a fun fact. We were using low-pressure water jets for mining gold in California in 1852. Steam and hot water jets were used in the early 1900s for cleaning, high-pressure water jets were used for mining in the 1960s, and about 10 years ago, the industry began using water jets for cutting giant stones. They're powerful. With Aqua Ring, the user envelops itself in a veil made of water. It regains some HP every turn. Water is really good at washing away stuff, and the first thing to do with a wound is you wash it. Keeps it from getting infected and hurting more. Though when doing this, you would normally want to use clean water, not water that's come from the inside of an animal. Aqua Tail. The user attacks by swinging its tail as if it were a vicious wave in a raging storm. You know, like a like a water storm, not a desert storm or like a thunder. It, it, it's all, it's an all water storm. They just summon a bunch of water around their tail while attacking with it, or maybe their tail is just sweating profusely. Yeah. Salty. It's just like the move brine. A brine is the stuff you put a turkey into for a few days to soak in all the tasty flavors. Essentially, it's flavored super salty water. But in Pokemon, it's more of a finisher move. If the foe's HP is down to about half, this attack will hit with double the power. I mean, when you pickle something, you soak it in a brine as the last step. And also, rubbing salt into a wound hurts a ton. So salty water in a wound turning you into a pickle? Yeah, that would hurt more if you were already damaged, for sure. The Pokemon winces not only from the pain, but from the sheer remembering of Pickle Rick. Razor Shell is another speciesist move that is only for those with shells, and sharp ones to boot. The user cuts its target with sharp shells. This may lower the target's defense stat. And well, I mean, using razor sharp things that are sharp, yeah, th there you go. Have you ever slipped and fell into a bunch of mussels or clams? It hurts. Razor clams are even a thing. They're usually all wet. The shell that it's hitting you with is probably wet, th thus it's water type. With the move Scald, the user shoots boiling water at its target. This may also leave the target with a burn. Hot water is hot, and heat hurts! See the fire types move video as for why heat hurts. Be it hot fire, hot steel, or hot water. Don't matter, it's hot. Heat hurts! Soak is a water type move, if you couldn't tell. It's the thing that you do to cereal to make it weaker so that it doesn't hurt the roof of your mouth as much. But as a Pokemon move, it has the user shoot a torrent of water at the target so much that it gets them sopping wet. So much so that it changes their type to water. Which gets way into the, like, the lore of what being a type really means for a Pokemon. We don't have time for that today, though. But it makes some sense. If you're that covered in water, then electricity and plants are going to love you so much more, so you're weaker to them. 
but you'd resist fire just a bit because it's hard to catch something on fire that's completely drenched in water. With life dew, the user scatters mysterious water around and restores the HP of itself and its ally Pokemon in battle. You know, that magical power that water has, the one that lets you not die because dehydration kills you. This is the opposite of that. Like drinking more water, it's good for your complexion and general health. Though there is such a thing as too much, it washes away electrolytes, which you need. Balance is key. Water pledge of allegiance to the slish of the united drips of some Wawa, which makes the fire much stronger. Basically, this move is a column of water strikes at the target, and when combined with the move's fire equivalent, the power increases and a rainbow appears, because we all know that when you're united, you are stronger, especially if you unite with your mortal foe. Basic stuff. The light from the fire mixed with the splash aftermath of the water creates a little rainbow. How beautiful. Pain. Splash! I do splash on duck and do nothing! You just move! This move does nothing. Like, little splashes of water are weak as heck. I can't even knock over this duck knight. Origin Pulse has Kyogre, the creator and guardian of the ocean, attack opposing Pokemon with countless beams of light that glow a deep and brilliant blue. So technically there's no water here, but considering that this is the signature move of what is essentially the Pokemon God of the Sea, yeah, it's water magic in its purest form. Infinity energy charged with the power of water. You know, that could explain how water types even blast the crazy volumes of water that they they do. They all have a little bit of this inside of them. It's just that Kyogre, now being as crazy as it is, is able to launch that raw power on its own. Steam eruption is the signature move of Volcanion. It's where it immerses the target in superheated steam, and it may leave the target with a burn. Really, it's just Scald again, but it's special because Volcanion got its own movie. Plus, I mean, steam is pretty different from boiling water anyway. Different properties. Same end result. A wet burn. Heat hurts! Water Shuriken is basically the signature move of Greninja, but at the same time they decided to give it to a Silgor because it's also a ninja. Anyway, Golisopod made a water katana, so it's fine that Greninja and its sidekick Aselgor can throw water shurikens. The user hits the target with throwing stars two to five times in a row. This move always goes first, and well, water really can be shaped into just about anything because it fills a volume. That's what liquids do. And throwing stars and ninjas tends to be super fast, hence the move going first. Now with Bouncy Bubble, your beloved partner Eevee attacks by shooting water bubbles at the target. It then absorbs water and restores its HP by half of the damage taken by the target. It's bubbles again, but this time they're bouncy and inexplainably heal Eevee magically, but maybe you just used the bubbles to clean its mouth while it was shooting them. There's also Splishy Splash. Your pretty partner Pikachu charges a huge wave with electricity and hits the opposing Pokemon with the wave. It may also leave the opposing Pokemon with paralysis. I hate these tiny baby moves for tiny babies. At least our next move is the opposite. The move that is sweeping the competitive scene. Vicious Rend. It's the signature move of Vish, meaning both Arctovish and Dracovish. And ah, I see what they did there. Instead of a vicious rend, it's a fishish rend, because it's a fish. Hmm. The user rends the target with its hard gills. If the user attacks before the target, the power of this move is double. Like, whoa, mega cool. And it's water type because, well, you see, fish have gills, and that means they breathe water. And water is basically fish type, but some mammals are allowed, so they all get grouped together, and they decided to be inclusive, so they named it water type instead of fish type. It's like how flying type was originally called bird type, but then they realized that's stupid. Bugs and dragons fly too. But anyway, fish have gills. If they were to ram you with their gills, it would hurt them more probably, but uh, it's, it's super strong gills on this guy, and those gills are probably filled to the brim with water. This water type. Snipe shot is the signature move of Inteleon, who ignores the effects of opposing Pokemon's moves and abilities that draw in moves, allowing this move to always hit the chosen target. So really, again, it's just water gun, but a sniper rifle water gun. So it is a bit better. Being as skilled of a sniper spy as Inteleon is, means that it will always hit its target, no matter what. Can't distract this guy's focus. Sparkling Aria is the signature move of Primarina, who bursts into song, emitting many bubbles. Any Pokemon suffering from a 
burn will be healed by the touch of these bubbles. What's up with Pokemon and bubbles, I swear. But uh, to explain, again, bubbles are Sobe basics, which are good for healing because it can clean wounds and stuff. But also, this move hurts enemies because magical bubble, but like a, especially magical bubbles this time, they're so sparkly and glowing. It may be closer to that infinity energy Kyogre has, but not quite as pure. But speaking of the signature move of Primarina, the mad lyrical spitter, Oceanic Operetta is Primarina's signature Z-move. The user, Primarina, summons a massive amount of water using its Z power and attacks the target with full force. Oh, that's that's a big bubble, but actually it's filled with water. I guess this is just Primarina using her siren powers to control water and have it fall heavily upon creatures, inducing ouch. It's like a big surf wave, but from above. It knocks you over, you slam your face into the ground, and now you're drenched. Honestly, this should just be Continental Crush, but significantly weaker, because like it's literally the same thing, but it's water instead of rocks? I feel like the rocks would hurt a lot more, but okay. Hydro Vortex is the generic water type Z move. The user creates a huge whirling current using its Z power to swallow the target with full force. So it's just a big whirlpool, which are most often caused by tides and ocean currents shifting around, or river water hitting obstacles like a big rock, and now the water has to like loob around, or there could be a sinkhole opening under a body of water, or like the drain in your tub. Max Geyser is the water type attack Dynamax Pokemon use. The user summons a heavy geyser that then causes rain that falls for five turns. What goes up comes down, and if you shoot a load of water up in like a geyser format, it will come down. Geysers are pretty powerful. Basically, there's a bunch of underground water, and due to geothermal heat, the water is always heating up, building pressure until eventually it bursts up like this. And all that water in the air, well, it rains back down because gravity. And finally, the three Gigantamax moves. Foam Burst is the one Gigantamax Kingler uses. It shoots out a load of water for your generic Hydro Pump-esque attack, but it is mixed with a load of crab foam, which harshly lowers the speed of its opponents. Crabs are seen making foamy bubbles with their mouths all the time because, well, they can breathe air too, and it gets mixed up with the surrounding water and their own saliva, and thus there's loads of bubbles. The Gigantamax attack Dredna uses is Stone Surge. Again, it's the generic blast of water, but it also scatters stones all around, creating the stealth rock effect. So are these little rocks mixed in with the water that it's shooting? Or is the water blast aimed a bit more at the ground to break up the rocks? Because water can do that. Canyons are caused by rivers, and as I've mentioned, water jets are used to cut steel, so they for sure could break rocks on the ground. And finally, G-Max Hydro Snipe. It's just snipe shot, but bigger. What a lame move to end on. Instead of a little of water, it's a of water.